Hi, I'm James. Isn't this a blast? I just love custom shaping and sculpturing in the Emacs to fit for that unique situation in the mouth, right? That's what we give to our patients. That's who we are. That's our craft. That's our skill set. It just creates a better bond with your patient. Now, this video is about adding glaze. We're going to use Crystal Glaze. Now, when we're brushing on Crystal Glaze, which is the first step in the process, we want to make sure that we have finished that surface appropriately so it grabs onto the glaze and it's not going to beat up on you, which is really <laughs> important to know that. And I talk about that in the shaping video. So the first step is to mix the glaze so it's the right consistency. And I would refer back to my days when I used to do a lot of painting. I painted my way through college by painting walls and working for various contractors. And when you're brushing on latex on the wall, you don't want it too thick, you don't want it too wet, otherwise it doesn't work. This is the same way, because with Crystal Glaze, if you put it on too thick, it's gonna bubble on you right? Particularly in the speed fire. So what we want to do is mix it like warm honey. So my criteria and the way I know it's the right viscosity is that when we're using that brush and we're placing the glaze on the surface, we don't want to see the remaining brush strokes in the glaze. Because if you see that in the glaze, then it's going to be too thick. And on the other hand, we don't want it too wet. Otherwise, it won't get enough glaze on there for you. So my method is to pre-mix it just like warm honey. Then we start applying the glaze to the surface. Once the glaze is fully applied to that ceramic surface, we can do some color additions. Now, my goal for color additions is to add some warmth to the cervical area on the buckle. That's usually A2 in most circumstances. And then on the occlusal surface, use your own imagination. I usually don't place colors on areas that are gonna have occlusal wear. Why? Because it's gonna be gone in a short period of time. Plus, I want those cuss tips and those occlusal marks to be really polished well. So I'd rather have a high polished surface and when you're adding colors there, they're gonna wear away. So when we do add occlusal colors, it's mainly in the depths of the grooves. Now, in this case, and for the illustration of this video, I'm gonna add a little bit of warmth in the depth of those grooves. That's a brown. You know, use your own imagination for this. A lot of people don't like to use that and that's fine. So I don't place a lot of white and blue on the cuss tips unless it's in the aesthetic zone, like on the buckle surfaces of upper pre-mowers and mowers. But on the closal table, I don't add a lot of colors because they do wear away. So we're gonna go ahead and get started with the sequence of adding glaze, adding colors, getting it into the furnace, and then the post superficial finishing. Why? Because when your restoration comes out of that furnace, it may look great, but microscopically it has roughness on it. We want to optimize that surface to the opposing dentition, and we want to refine the margin area to polish it well to make sure there's no porcelain tags and make sure it's really smooth. So when you do cement, it's easy cleanup and it's a smooth surface so it doesn't collect biofilms microscopically. So that's why we superficial gloss finish all our restorations here at the Clem Practice. We want a good smooth area that's under the gum line or next to that free gingiva. And then anteriorly, we use it for superficial gloss finishing to really make our restoration sizzle. So let's make this thing happen. Prior to glazing, we're going to load and fill the restoration with object fix. I like the flow. We're going to overfill so when we plunge in that dye pen, it spreads out the object fix and seals the margin. Now we're going to check the margins and make sure they're well sealed. Any area that's slightly open, use your finger and just push that object fix up where it should be so the margins are sealed because we want to seal them for several reasons. Number one is to support the margins during the firing. Number two is to seal them while we're adding the glaze. When we mix the glaze, we want it like warm honey. Add the liquid, pick the glaze up on the brush, and start a horizontal stroke along the margin. That way the glaze doesn't creep up under that margin. 
we horizontally paint on the glaze 360 around the crown notice we don't want to see brush strokes if we see brush strokes after the addition of the glaze it means the glaze is too thick it's like a good latex painting Once the glaze is applied to the external axial surface, we're going to apply it to the occlusal table. Our method is to paint from the central groove up the triangular ridges, making sure that we're not pulling and creating puddles of glaze down at the depths of the grooves and pits. The glaze has to be at the right consistency so it doesn't run down those triangular ridges. And there's our glaze addition. This will seal the restoration well during the firing process. Now we have to consider, do we want to add some colors? We're going to paint in some colors. It's like a palette. Here we're picking up an A shade. And we're going to add that to the depths of the grooves and pits. This gives that dentinal warm appearance once it fires. We're going to surface mix the stain into the glaze. We want to avoid blotching. We're feathering out the colors, making them very subtle. It's always nice to add just a little warmth on the external primary grooves. That will look beautiful. You won't see it this intense once it fires. On the buckle, quite often I will add an A color, a very subtle A color feathered from the margin into the mid body of that restoration. Here's a technique that really documents how you want to feather to avoid blotching. If it's too intense, you're going to get those blotch colors and you don't want to do that. So once the color's added, we take the tip of that brush using that ceramic as a mixing palette we just feather out that color into the mid body of the restoration endodontic file number 15 i like to add a little bit of warmth at the depths of the groove there's different colors of browns that you can use the secret with adding brown is you apply the brown and then you subtract when it's too intense You'll see with the final restoration, you don't really see a lot of brown at the depths of the grooves. This is to create an illusion of reality. The 15 endodontic file works extremely well. Now we're gonna take a small brush and feather and dilute surface mixing that brown so it's not so obvious and ugly. You don't want to create an ugly situation. I'm very sensitive to my clients to make sure this is not going to interfere with their appreciation of the restoration we're placing in the mouth. I don't like to hear that word is, well, what's all the brown for? I don't get that. I'm careful on how we apply. And there we have it. We're ready to now take this to the furnace. We're going to place this on the small firing pin for the fast cycle. This is P3. When you open the hood, be ready to place that restoration in the firing zone in the middle as quick as you can and hit start. That will keep that temperature from cooling down too much and it will optimize your firing time. Lay the restoration on the cooling tray as well will help cool down that ceramic in a more effective way. You want to wait a few minutes before you retrieve. Back on our lab bench, we can see we have a beautiful restoration. We're not done yet. We want to do our superficial gloss finishing. We can observe that subtle transition of the warmth at the margin. First step is to clean the margins up microscopically. This is with the blue Meisinger polishing wheel. With a very light touch, we're just polishing the margins right at that seam of the margin 
Make sure there's no ceramic tags remaining from the glaze process. And any other areas we want to smooth, particularly on the cusp tips or line angles, I see one more little tag there on the buckle margin. That's the ceramic tag from the glaze. Just polish that clean. Microscopically, that occlusal table is still rough with the glaze. We're gonna take a stiff, a stiff Robinson wheel with a diamond paste, and we're gonna smooth off those microscopic tags. I like to polish the whole surface of the restoration. Main reason is to keep a smooth surface, particularly posteriorly, so it discourages biofilm collection <laughs> because of surface texture. And then on that occlusal table, we want it smooth so it wears appropriately to the posing dentition. Now take a look here. When we're using that stiff Robison wheel, we plunge and release. That allows the bristles to release and get a complete polish at the depths of those pits and grooves. Anytime you polish, this is a very effective method for polishing down to the depths of the grooves. A good diamond paste, a stiff Robison wheel, and a plunge and release technique. Part of mastering the craft is the superficial gloss finishing. This place is that final finished touch that just makes me passionate about what I do. My goal is to always get as close to nature as we can. The Perry Kamada on the buckle surface, you can see that nice little ripple there. That's fun. Just these subtle little nuances will create a beautiful restoration. And when you feel good about what you do, the patients will feel that. Now, for the sake of this video, we're going to use the natural dye material. This represents the color of the prep. I use this more on anterior teeth when I'm color matching, but it illustrates how the color of the prep can optimize and really make that restoration look very attractive. Unless you're blocking out a dark stump, in a case like this with an empty, you'll see that the color of the prep and the cement will have an impact on the beauty of the final restoration. And that's why I like all ceramic dentistry. When Emacs came out, we had that strength. It really changed what we could do aesthetically. And it's just a lot of fun to accomplish. And there you have it for staining glaze and finishing the staining glaze and ready to place it in the mouth. It's not hard. If you have any questions or comments, make sure you post them below because I want to hear from you. I just really appreciate you watching these videos. It's something that I'm passionate about sharing to the world. And if you have comments or questions, post them below and I will respond to you. Bye now.